Sorry for my back. <laughs> I'll try and sort of... <clears throat> Are you done? So, Uh, in case you're wondering why I'm sitting here, Gary Oldman and I have been business partners for almost 30 years. We've had a long road together. The things we used to think about when we were young, we sort of ticked the boxes and we sort of reached all the spots that you wish you would reach. We've had the grandest ride. I'm not going to talk about me at all, but I want you to understand why I'm here. And I also have a background in the theater and in acting and such. We are now back at this minute to the scene of the crime. <laughs> Gary auditioned for acting schools, other acting schools, didn't you? Yeah. What happened then? <laughs> well, I, uh, the, the very first audition that I had was for RADA, and, um, <laughs> and uh, we had a, actually, funny story, we had a, a, a movement teacher, a dance teacher here, who used to call me Giri. She used to pronounce my name Giri. She was just like that. And she would always say that she loved coming to Bruford because the RADA students, the buildings and the rooms were so narrow and so small that they were sort of, they were all like this. This is, this is, this is how the RADA students would act, you see, and at least we had some space and room here. But, um, yeah, I, aud I auditioned for RADA and they said, um, do you, do, you, you know, do you have anything else to fall back on? You should think about something else to do for a living. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, was it Webber Douglas? I don't know. Anyway, I didn't, I didn't get in, and I, got, I came here, and I got, I got in, and that was it. You came here, you did... You came here, you did two monologues up in one of the rooms here. Yeah. Do you remember what they were? Yeah, it was um, the uh, entertaining Mr. Sloan, Joe Walton and, um, and the two gentlemen of Verona. Yeah. Did they immediately leap to their feet and say, yes, you must be here? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 I, I, I mean, I have to, I, I have to say, I, I, was, I was not, um, I wasn't a star you know, pupil here. I never, most of the work, I don't, do you still do extracurriculum uh, plays and things like that? Do you, do you, yeah, because we used to do one act's lunch hour, we used to do um, a one act, a 50 minute play at, at lunchtime in the barn. Um, and then we would do full length plays in the barn, uh, you know, after, in the, in, you know, in the evening. So what we, we would do, um, we would work on these plays in our lunch hour and any kind of spare time that we, that, that, that we had and put them on. And those, those and that, it so turned out that those were the better roles that I played. I never had a big starring role here when I was um, uh, um, uh, a student. So it, 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 the, the, the real, the, the roles I remember, in fact, are what we worked on outside of the curriculum. Yeah. So the first question is a big one. It's a two-parter. What did they teach you here, and what did you learn here? <laughs> well, we are you still do you the do you still do it was sort of Stanislavski the system is that what you basically yeah. Uh, so that, it was an, it, really an introduction to that. What do you, what do you learn here? You, you get a certain, it, a certain discipline. It opens up the imagination. Um, there is uh, a technique that, that, that you, that, that not necessarily after three years that you will master, but it sort of gives you the foundation, how to move, how to be in a space, how to use the voice, um, um, 
Do you still have mime and movement? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Do, you do, do, you, do you have fencing? <laughs> combat. They call it, it used to be stage fighting, but now they call it stage combat. Yeah. In Hollywood, we call it martial arts. They send you to martial arts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, we, had an, we had an hour of fencing every day. Yeah, and um, it, at the time, you think it's a little bonkers. Um, and then it, it's... There are things that you will learn, that you're learning now, that, you're, that you, will, you will so appreciate uh, uh, down the line. The, I mean, the mime, the movement, the fencing, it, or it, it, it gave, it gives you a sense of what you're doing uh, uh, physically. It was, um, and I'm a, a, applying that, that work, that groundwork is still there, which I, um, which I really, I, I still use. And it's like any, it's like any, it's like anything. You, you'll take the good, disregard the bad, and, um, uh, you know, is, we, I, I think that, you, I'll be honest with you, I was a tad disappointed that I did not get into RADA at the time. <laughs> my heroes, my acting heroes had gone there. Um, the people that I looked up to was, uh, you know, Alec Guinness, Peter Sellers, Tom Courtney, Alan Bates. You know these these uh, Albert Finney, God rest his soul. It, I mean, they were sort of giants of the theatre, and I and I thought very na naively as a 17-year-old, as an 18-year-old, you know, that it was that it was um, you know that that is the place I need to be. That's where. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it, it's all they they are somewhat all a much of a muchness. You know, um, it's. How you, how you use, how you use and take, it's how you take the work and how you channel it and how you use it. I was the first person, I was never, the third year, I never appeared in the final shows because I got a job and I got an equity card and was, was off and running. That was not because I was a super exceptionally talented student. I had written all my letters, had my photograph taken, I sent them out. I was the first person in my year to audition and the first person in my year to get a job. And that was all down to diligence and hard work. When all those other kids were, you know, forgive me, fucking around up the pub. <laughs> you know, I was, um, I was working. And, and, it, and it's, um, so that's what you, you know, it gives you a certain, like I said, it gives you a certain discipline. Um, but uh, this, this is where you, where you get the, where, this is where you get the work bug. And you have to give it, um, you have to give it your very best. You, you can't. Don't, don't be in this game if you want to give it your second best because the difference, the margin between your second best and your worst is very small. You've got to want to, it's got to be like a religion. Um, wouldn't you agree, Doug? You've got to, it has, it, it has it, to it, be. It, it, it's the church of theater that you have to join first and foremost and keep with you. I want to go back to Gary, something you said a moment ago. <clears throat> I heard about fencing. I heard Gary Oldman give a great piece of acting instruction to a young actor. It was a young actor who was having struggles with his body. How do you move on the stage? He was awkward. He was a good actor, but awkward. He was new. You all, everyone knows that feeling at some point. And he wasn't getting work, I think, because of it. He was getting close. And Gary said, send him to me because I want him to work on some Shakespeare. Isn't that a fascinating thing to say, you're having a body awkwardness, but we're going to put you, I'm going to give you the energy and focus from doing Shakespeare. So when you're 
bring up something like fencing. What are you getting from the fencing? Is it a concentration? Is it a wholeness of... You just know where, you know, it's your, the, the way you, the way you stand, the way you move in, in space, the way you're moving forward, you're moving backward, you have a center. You know, you become spatially aware of, uh, and, and what, and what the body... And the thinking and, is that once you have, you're used to this, you're going to take this with you in your DNA forward. Yeah, you uh, apply it to, it, it gives you a sense of how you move. It gives you a sensation of what the, what the, what the body is doing, and then you apply it to, you, to a Churchill. <laughs> you know, the way he moves, the, the, the way he moves through space. Yeah, I mean, you could have an idea of what you want, but then you've got, then you've got to know, am, am I achieving it? Am I doing it? You, can, you watch the old footage and you see the physicality, but then you have to... First, you have to kind of mimic, in a way, with something like that, I think. That, 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 of speaking personally, you, you sort of begin um, with a... An, you kind of begin with an impersonation, and then, and then you have to make it. Uh, your, 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 you have to own it as your, as a, as it's, as a, as a being. So when you say to a young actor, you're having trouble with your body, your awkwardness on stage. I want you to come to me and do some Shakespeare monologues. What's the, what's the thinking that says Shakespeare is now going to help you? Well, what I did with that actor was I moved him around and had him running around and jumping and doing all sorts of things while speaking verse. And then your, your I, think, I think that's, that, that was, the actor that we're talking about is, He's, I mean, he's, he's, very, he's handsome, he's tall, he's strong, he's got a good, I mean, he's got a good body. And I think there's a sort of slight disconnect. There's a thing that switches off or on when he's, when he's now speaking text. Have, you, have any of you ever felt that? that where, you, where you're trying to connect? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's one of those things. But uh, I felt that that would at least be an exercise where it would, it would free, free him up. And, the, and, and well, it's, it's, it's one of many, but... Um, you, uh, I can tell you, because I've watched, I've lived through this all the time, Gary meticulously prepares for every role that he's sort of famous for. He may not think of himself as meticulously preparing, but he's, he's preparing. Some of you may remember the film True Romance, and Gary plays this, well, how would you describe him? Well, he's, so he's a white pimp who thinks he's black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, now, here's a, here's a person who grew up in New Cross, is an American character, and I remember when you went to do the role, you said, I really haven't thought about what I'm doing when we get there, and you had a long drive to get there. But in the previous weeks, he had been talking to stagehands and listening to loud rap music in the car. And he was sort of putting it all together. He doesn't give himself enough credit. Putting it all together so that on the day, you had the rhythm, the beat, the vibe, the attitude, all the stuff. With the, you also had the scar, the eye, the tooth. Well, the it's, hair. Old, it's old Stella Adler stuff, really. I mean, you, yeah. it's, it's, it's Stanislavski Stella Adler. You, you, you drink in the... The, the, it's, it, that, that's as much to do with the, the words on the page are one thing, but it's also to do with a whole culture um, that, you, that you want to, um, you want to, it, it, you want to soak, it's kind of, it's, it's a thing where you're just, so, you're unconsciously doing it, you're kind of soaking soaking it up. I mean, I, Giselle, my wife, who's sitting there, would tell you that what, what's, I have a method on my, what, what are the three, what are the stages? Huh? Four. What is it? Rejection. Denial. Procrastination. Acceptance.
The acceptance is somehow related to surrender. It's surrender. It's surrender. <laughs> yeah. You, okay, so you meticulously prepare these roles. Do you find that, do you find at all useful the idea that for preparing a role, improvisation plays a role or inspiration? Well, uh, it's, that, uh, it's, a, it's a hard one because I often feel, or in my experience, if the play is good enough and the text is good enough, you don't need to improvise because the author's given you it all. It's all there. Um, it's, it's often when you're having a problem with something, you can go, you can go off the text and, and improvise, but that then doesn't necessarily, you know, you might improvise something and the director will say, you know, they can't always say, that's fantastic, say that. You know, you improvise, you find something, and then you have still anchored to the text that you have to speak. But have you found that getting a certain prop, a coat, a hat, a cane, something, you get it and you say, ah, this now gives me something else, I'm going to use it. Yeah, I mean, I call it the cloak of inspiration. You know, will the cloak of inspiration fall? And sometimes it it comes early, sometimes it comes late, and there have been occasions, if you've seen any of my films, when it hasn't actually occurred <laughs> at all. But, but uh, it, I was doing a movie uh, in the 90s, a film with Sean Penn and Ed Harris called State of Grace, and I played, was playing an um, Irish Westie. Um, it, it actually, the character was based on a, on, a, on, a, a, on a real character called Mickey Featherstone. who was a n really na nasty piece of work. Who, uh, was the, the, this was a gang in Hell's Kitchen. And um, I, I had an accent, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't sitting. It, it, it wasn't con like here and here or here and here. It, it just wasn't sort of connecting. So I, I had this sort of Irish, you know, this guy used to, you know, it was all, it was all like that. But that's kind of I, all it was. And I was struggling. And I, one guy had already been fired. So the actor that was playing my brother um, one day I came in and he wasn't there anymore and it was Ed Harris. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm too... Uh, and they went, no, he, he, had, to, he had to go. Um, and I thought, I'm next. <laughs> um, and uh, you would read a scene and then Sean Penn would go over to the director and he'd go... And of course you're going, he's, it's me, it's me, he's going you know. um, to... So I did, I was, I was worried that I would not make it to actual f shooting. And it was rare. We had a week or so of rehearsal, but it's very rare now. Very rare to have rehearsal. Anyway, I got to a costume fitting, and I remember Ode Bronson Howard, who was the costume designer, had this rack of clothes, and I tried on this leather jacket, and I looked in the mirror, and this is at the 11th hour, and I had kind of long hair, and I put the leather jacket on, looked in the mirror, and I flicked my hair, but I didn't flick it, it was sort of, I flicked it kind of like my head at an angle, so I didn't flick it that way, I kind of f flicked it in it, uh, where, and the, and, it, and I went, there he is. <laughs> I thought, that's the guy. There he is. And the physicality and the whole strut, the whole gait of the man, um, even now, even with the physicality informed the language. Because now I could, now I could fucking throw it, like, like, I could throw it away, you know, like, and this whole persona kind of came together 
at the 11th hour where I spent two weeks of rehearsal thinking I was going to be fired. And suddenly, from a leather jacket, the physicality came, and because the physicality worked, the voice connected with the center, and it wasn't just an accent anymore, it was a real living, I felt that it was a real being. And sometimes, I'm sure some of you have experienced this, but you know, sometimes you do, it's, and it is partly to do with the work. I, I worked so hard, many, uh, and God bless my wife, who was my researcher and my, uh, you know, my sounding board, and, and, um, um, and occasionally Douglas, I'd get on the phone and say, get me out of this. Um, <laughs> in a moment of panic, but I, I would. I say back, they will sue you. <laughs> they will sue you. You will never work again. I go, well, maybe, let me think about it. <laughs> but, the, um, but I worked very, very hard on uh, Winston, and, but the t so, and we had rehearsal. Thank, thank God we had rehearsal. God bless Joe Wright for, for rehearsing. But I'd worked so long on it, I learned it like a play. I knew it, I knew it word for word, like a play. And, and this is partly applying what I learned here. You know, this, this take, it goes all, it leads, all the roads lead back. Um, it's a good time for you to, to use the line that another actor used about how long you know the role. Yeah, it's a Laurence Olivier line, which, which I've adopted. I think it's wonderful. It's not, how, it's not how well you know something, it's how long you've known it. You know, you can know something well, but when you've sat with it for months and months and months, and you've been thinking about it, and the head is going round, and the imagination, you know, when you're, when you're it's, it's churning, around in there um, but but what it enabled what it what, what what all that work enabled me then to get in front of the camera and really playing Winston was it was as easy as breathing it so, was it was not how uh, well you know the role how but, long you know but the role. I was very um, I, I was just the, the, it, this is the thing that they all tell you here. Relaxation, isn't it? Relaxation. You do these voice classes. You've got to get rid of the tension here. You've got to get rid of the tension in the shoulder. You don't breathe from the shoulders of the chest. You breathe from the diaphragm and all that they talk about. <laughs> relaxation, relaxation. And it's real you know. stuff. It's good stuff too, isn't and it? It's, yeah, yeah, because, you know, you're on stage and you're in a play and we used to look at I, I, we used to look at animals. Do you still sort of like study animals, yeah. right? Well, but but here's you know, and it might seem really you kind of at first you know, especially certainly when you don't you've never been around in any of this stuff, and you arrive and you're a first year, and you think, oh, you know, from South London, go go go, fucking animals, why not? You know what I mean? I've got to study that for. But but you look at a cat. A cat will jump from the floor to the table. A dog won't do it, a dog can't do it, but a cat can jump from the floor to the table using only the energy it needs to get from there to there. It doesn't overexert itself. It knows instinctively the energy to get from one space to another. And it's the same thing, you're in a play, all this whole idea of relaxation, you know, you're in a play and you're picking up a glass and you're in a scene and you're drinking from a thing or whatever you're doing or you're pouring tea, you know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna pick that thing up and the thing, just use the energy, just use the energy that it takes to actually pick up a glass. You're not exerting yourself, you know, you're keeping the, you know, it's all, but we both, all we of both that. We both know actors who can make a whole play out of taking the glass. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, but, you, but I suppose in a, a very disconnected way, but I'm trying to say that the guy, you, you, you know, you take all, all of it was, um, not all of it, you don't learn it all here, but it is the very road to, you, you're making those 
those first steps on that on, on, on that road on that on that journey. We talk we talk often about young actors and acting school. What are they learning? What do you want them to go away with? A couple words, and we're not I'm getting a moment to the stage versus the screen. But I want to deal with these two words that have come up. These two phrases. We talk about learning the benefits of stamina. You can't do it without stamina. And we talk about vanquishing lazy brain. At the end of everything you learned here, this is the biggest thing to take away, isn't it? Well, I think, you know, there's two schools. There's the Stanislavski system, then there's, you know, the kind of Stella Adler, which is really, I mean, it's Stanislavski based. Um, and there's Meisner, and there's other, Jutta Hagen, and there's, there's all these other people. And then, and then uh, you know, the, and then there's Strasbourg, you know, the method. And, you know, recall, emotional recall is, is it, it's, of course it's useful. Um, you know, I have been asked to cry and uh, on, on, on in, well, in the theater and in, in a film. And, you know, you recollect and you go back to, I used to use photos and I used to photos, I used to use music. I, some, I used to think, I used to use my dead dad, my father a lot. And so you are channeling those, those feelings. So it, there, there's a, it, 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 that, I can get that from the, from the actor studio thing, that, I get that. But reading in all the time, reading in, Adler, Stanislavski, you know, you read out, you read from, you get, you get the ideas from what the playwrights are telling you, from what's, what's actually in front of you, in the text. And it is all about, um, it's not psychoanalyst, analyzing it's about imagination and it's about thinking it's also it's about observation you probably you know this you know as what is it walker evans you know you pry you you stare you listen you eavesdrop my wife will often say to me stop it and i'm like at a restaurant and i'm like she says you're staring at those people i said well I get, but i'm kind of working you know, because <laughs> you're, I'm putting it in the bank. I'm thinking, oh, that's interesting. Or, you, you are, or a look of a character or someone, you go, I could use that, that's interesting. Look at the way this guy's walking. So you're always, you're always looking and listening and using, and using the imagination because I am limited to my upbringing, Class, my, you, you, you know, there are certain, uh, there's, there's, um, it's my DNA. I, 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 come, I come from South London. These playwrights, oh, I mean, Chekhov, Arthur Miller, um, they, are, they, 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 they are talking about themes and ideas that are way outside of my life experience way outside of any of our, life, uh, our, our lives. Um, so Shakespeare, um, what would you say? Shakespeare, Miller, I mean these, I'm trying to think of all those 20th century, you know. Well, we, we, had, we recently had a drive back from the desert in California to Los Angeles and we had a two hour conversation about where Shakespeare fits in all of this, if you remember, because it was a fascinating, thing because there's very little subtext available to you when you're doing Shakespeare. But I want to go on to your point. The better the writing, the writing of Arthur, the writing of Tennessee, the writing of these great writers, the better the writing, the entire roadmap is there if you bother to look for the clues. And if you've had great script interpretive background, you'll it, find it all there. You can even your at that, emotional map of You can the even world. at that point do a great yeah. mouthwash commercial because the text is still going to be a roadmap. <laughs> we got to talking about the idea that, and of course, modern acting is born by Stanislavski because of Chekhov, Ibsen, and Strindberg. Adler takes it to America and perfects it there. But you often have writing that is not Chekhov or Strindberg, and it does not have the subtext available of Arthur Miller 
And that would be the case in something like Batman, where you, what do you do? Which is, like I said, it's just about imagination. I mean, in, in, in you know, the Harry Potter movies, Batman and Harry Potter, I mean, it's all plot. It's exposition, mainly. And you've got to find a way of making plot character. Because it's all that, you know, and half the, I mean... What does a character well, say? What's an example of that? Impossible stuff. I need a chopper on the roof, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the thing about Gordon is, is that Batman's already solved the crime for him when he gets there, every time he gets there. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't do much detecting, do I? <laughs> Because Batman, Christian Bale's done it all. <laughs> so, but it's that kind of, it's, it's, you know, I need a SWAT team now. You know, this is, this, this is, there's only, there's surely only so much you can do with that. <laughs> Unless you're Glenda Jackson. Yeah. And then you can go, I need a SWAT team now. And I would want a refund at that point. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, um, we, we see a lot of actors who go into theater training, but you're gonna end up working, if, you, if you're a working actor, you, it's inevitable you're gonna be doing motion pictures and television. Uh, there is a relationship between the two, and it's somehow related to a line I've heard you use about needing to burn from the first bar. Well, it will theatre very much is, you know, that. It's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, once that cue comes, you know, you can't, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a obviously with a, with a movie, you can, you can, e you know, it's, it's more like jazz. You can work to the solo. Uh, with 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 theater. So it's, it's, you're it's making a movie, and I'm sure everyone in this room knows. If you don't, it's do you be... do you have television and movie work? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. everyone in this room either knows, or if you don't know this, you're going to learn it. It's the most horrible thing to learn that things are shot out of sequence. So you're going to be shooting a nighttime scene in the day, a daytime scene in the night. They're going to start the movie with the scene where your kid has been kidnapped. That's your first day, your first minute. It's completely out of sequence with the breakfast scene you're doing the next day. Uh, this is where theater training really has a great application for movies. Because the theater, you're going to rehearse it in sequence. That's all you're going to do. You're going to learn the rhythms. And you get to play it in sequence. So That's you right. get an arc, you get a life for two hours, three hours over the, over the, over the play. You know, you get, to, you get to go somewhere. So in the movie, you got to but, see the sequence. You'll never have had the chance to rehearse it. Yeah. In fact, talk, talk about film rehearsals for just a minute, because there's several different types of them open up for questions. <laughs> well, there's some that rehearse and some that don't. I mean, I, I give you, I'll give you an example of... Uh, I mean, this is... Um, you, some of you probably worked already. I mean, you're not... Uh, you, you know, you may, have, you may have experienced this, but um, this is a sort of... This is what you what you what you could encounter in the in the as I say in the not not from the the comfort of a acting school but in the in the real world. I um, the very first Batman that we did. It was shot here. It was shot here in Chicago, London, Dublin, Dublin for Chicago. There's nowhere you shoot anymore, which is the actual city we were shooting, sadly. But uh, Anyway, I'd, I had spoken to Chris Nolan over the phone, um, got to the set, and I got out of a police car my first day, my first night. I got out of a police car. There was a couple of hoods, you know, bad guys that were sort of Batman had been there and wrapped them all up and left them for me. I didn't even have to do any work. You see, Batman did it for me. 
And I have a, couple, a line or two to the cop, and uh, that's the scene. And I get out of the car for the rehearsal, and I do the, the scene. By and rehearsal, we mean on the set. Oh, yeah, not rehearsal. When I say rehearsal, I mean just I walk through. He says, you get out of the car, you walk, and you hit this mark, and then you say this mark. And in 15 minutes, it's not going to be rehearsal anymore. Less than 15 Less than 15. So, um, so that's the other thing. The trying to, of what I call kitchen acting or bedroom acting or whatever you, wh wh wherever you, wherever you study, you know, you've got to do enough of that to get there and know it well enough and be ready just it for whatever they're going to throw at you. But I get to the thing, I do the scene and Chris Nolan says to me, is that how you're going to do it? <laughs> And I said, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking, thinking, you know, like, and he went, hmm, okay, you want to do one? I went, yeah, sure. So I get in the car, he says, action, I get out of the car, do the scene, cut, and he comes over to me and he says, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think we got it, um, would you like another take? To which I said, well, I've come all this way. <laughs> I had actually come from L.A. I said, well, I've come all this way. It'd be nice to do <coughs> two takes <laughs> of the thing. And that was that whatever decision, whatever I was doing, I had thought about it up to that point. But whatever I was doing now was locked in. It was locked in. One five-minute rehearsal, and in seven years of doing the three shows, he, I, I, he gave me one note once, a fantastic note, but he gave me one note. He never used to say anything. Hello, how are you? Good morning. How are the boys? Good. All right, so you're over there. Batman comes in there. You know, this is, this is, this is it. And... Um, uh, and he gave me a note once, and I, I did a scene, and he said, he said, cut. And he came over, and he said, um, that was good. He said, there's just more at stake. You know, great which, is a, which, is a great, great, which is a great note. And you go, okay, okay. Um, so that's the, you know, you, you uh, for, for some of you, all of you, if, you, if you're going into television, uh, and, and your work, if you want to be on the stage, that's, that's great. But I mean, you know, you probably will end up doing some TV or film or more, more film than you will theatre or... Um, that's, that's the speed that it, that it works out. It works out. And, and to actually have a rehearsal as we did, as we did for Darkest Hour is... I mean, it's a phenomenon. It's like a supernatural event. You go, I can't believe we're actually having rehearsal. And by rehearsal, he means we had two weeks, and Gary got in the makeup almost every one of those days prior to shooting. Uh, yeah, uh, and I wanted to, you know, you get the physicality and the thing, and I thought it would help the other actors that were so, because I'm, you know, uh, the shape I am, and it, it, so they were going to get, they were going to get an idea of what, what to expect. Um, uh, but it's so it all comes in a way it all comes back to that discipline that you're learning here that we're talking about because it, it really is there is no substitute for just putting in the, the work intellectually, you, physically, but you've got to, you, you just got and you probably instinctively I'm not telling you anything new you probably instinctively know this but it, it's um, as you call it, no, no lazy brain. You gotta, no lazy you gotta, brain. gotta really, you gotta really just do. It's, it's about hard work as much as it is about intuition. Cannot be taught, it, or it, it can be honed, and you can pra you can practice it um, and finesse it the way you can 
um, it, it, it's like just the more you do, the more you practice, and the more you're physically up there doing something. You know, it is about repetition, 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 repetition. Um, and even you say to Tony Hopkins, you know, what, what, how do you, what's your method? How do you? And he goes, repetition, 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 repetition. You know, you just keep, keep. You know, so it's in you, and it, and it, and it's, 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 it's part of you. So you don't. That, that's where I like to. I like to be in a place. And you can't always, you can't always, because you just don't even get long enough to study. But I do like to be, as I'm sure anyone here does, you like to be in a place where you know it so well you forgot it. Yeah. That you don't even, it's like, the, la the words are second nature. You, do, you don't even have to, th have to think about them. If someone said, okay, well now you're going to do that speech and you're juggling, you could, the, the, the lines are just there, they're in you, they live, you know, so that's, that's where, I mean, that's where we, we, we would all like to be. But I, I'd love to... I, yeah, one more I'd question love, before the Q&A. One room. more question. Yeah. Uh, some of the characters you play are based on real people who's done a lot of biopics, so you can, you have thing, a lot of research and roadmap yeah. to go from. Some are based on novel characters or cartoon characters like Gordon, so you have a basis. And then you have other characters like the contender, where there's no previous information other, that's in, other than is in the script. What, quickly, is the, the different approach? Well, they're equally as fun, um, because you've got, first of all, it, with, with something like Oswald or those kind of characters, you know, you've got enough. You've got enough. There are books written about these. I mean, there's 500, 600 books written about Churchill. I mean, you can't possibly get... get you don't read them all, but but there's so such a vast amount of material that it can that at least that that f f all the, the, the just visually you know starts to feed um, uh, the imagination, and you become a detective. You become like an investigator. You start finding out about this person. And um, and I had a, my luckily I had Giselle who was who's actually a, just instinctively a great researcher, and she would come to me or find a picture and say, "Have you ever seen this photograph of Churchill?" And you'd look, and and it would give you, you know, you get clues, you get it, um, the way someone's sitting in a chair, or the, the you know just the way they walk, the way they move. So you've got that at your disposal. And that's all feeding the animal. Um, when you've got um, a character that you that you're making up, then you're taking you take what the what the playwright or the, or the screenwriter is giving you, and then. Um, but you're not straightjacketed into that a, a historic an iconic figure, so you can you you can. You can have, I think you can have fun with it. I mean, I got. So when you read Smiley or Gordon, you have something you go to that has a basis because of they're already created. When you read The Contender, you've got to go from what's there. Well, you read something like like True Romance, you read that, and I just called up Tony Tony Scott, and um, and I said I've been looking at this character. I said, can I have dreadlocks? And he said, uh, yeah. And so I knew a wig maker, and I went to this guy and had that wig made. Um, and then I had had a milky eye in a film, and I went back to the art department, and I said, do you still have those eyes, those, those milky? So when I, got to, uh, when I got to the set, you know, that scar and the eye. I thought, well, I'm only in it for 10 minutes, so I might as well kind of <laughs> go out and blaze the glory. <laughs> um, so, uh, you, you know, and that, but there was nothing, there was nothing in, the, there was no description in the text. It, so I, I could have, you, you know, uh, uh, the thing is, you offer ideas up, that's the thing. There was no description, what, but... what can a director say? Mm, no. But, but that's, that's, that's the other thing. Don't, don't be shy in... You know, actors, got, you should cut... We, we're imaginative creatures. We have ideas. And don't, please, don't ever be shy of coming forward and offering up an idea. 
that, that, that is, to me, the, the job of an actor is to come... The director will have an overall view. He will have the picture in, 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 in the, uh, the whole thing in their head. Um, but it never hurts to just be, just, just say, listen, I've been thinking and I've got this idea. The worst thing that they can do is say, um, no, because I, I'm thinking, oh, that scene works there, so that wouldn't work. But, th you know, but thank you. Um, so never be, never be shy in coming forward with, 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 with uh, you, you know, questions, using, questions. using your imagination and coming, coming, you have coming up with for ideas. Uh, uh, let Let's me open it. it up to we you have, guys. Yeah. What do you, Who has anybody, questions? Anybody got anything? This person has a question right here. Who's that? Hi, Gary. Hello. Um, so I'm very interested in the distinction that actors or performers find in in distincting the difference between a musician and an actor and where the middle point is in that. Um, and I know that you're into your music, uh, you play piano, you've done songs and whatnot. Um, and you said in the interview once that you would rather be a musician than an actor, I think to Charlie Rose. Um, and I was interested to see if you'd have auditioned for Rose Bruford <laughs> now. <laughs> Do you, do you think that the prospect of taking the actor musician course <laughs> would be a realistic one for you? Yeah. Uh, what? It, <coughs> be, before I answer that that question, what is this? Now, when I was here, there was, um, uh, when I was here, uh, there was a long time ago, there was a theatre, a TIE, Theatre and Education, and the TTA, or Technical Course, which was Stage Management, Costume, all rolled into one. So there were three courses, and so, this musician, musician, actor, what, 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 is, what is that exactly? <laughs> what, what? So, the actor musician course is a three year training as an actor with the incorporation of music on stage and bringing a musicality to performance. So, so literally, the idea of musicality to acting and also instruments on stage and more. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of a lot of actor musicians. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, musical theatre. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's. Listen, a lot of the, a lot, uh, no, a lot of the. I have never had a. I've never really had an opportunity. Certainly in film. Let's say in 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 film. I've been uh, in theatre, I've danced and sang and been in musicals and, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I, that, that I learned here in my, early, in my early career on the stage um, was, I, I applied, you know, that, um, but never really had a chance. Uh, is, this, is this with a, a mind to, uh, uh, like, creating a company? specifically with, with, with that in mind? I think it's not to... There's a difference between it being musical theatre and actor musicianship. So, cause I, only because I'd, I'd seen that... I think... Are you, are you a pianist? Do you, do you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and for me, the reason I took the course is because I have a big passion for music and playing music. And like, also the fact that you, you played Beethoven, I, I thought that, like, obviously, characters aren't always close to you, but maybe... There was a musical element. Of oh, it was all like, about is, yeah. I mean, something like that is, yeah. is, is, is all about the uh, all about the, the the music. Yeah. And if you feel I mean, like I I think that they, I, how I use it, um, is, you know, it's, 
it's so uh, it fires the, the 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 heart and the brain very you know very quickly. Music, you know, you hear a piece of music, and it can take you in as microsecond back to a place, a time, a sensation, a feeling, and I think that um, using, you, you know, there are accents and, and, and there's writing. I mean, if you look at Tennessee, you know, there's, there's, there's a musicality in the writing. Mammoth, there's, there's, there's musicality there, there's a rhythm. Um, I think they're all, I, I think they're all sort of um, uh, c connected. I use music, I have used music to get into um, uh, a role or a frame of mind on a, yeah, to, to approach a, um, a, a scene um, or what, the, even finding a character. You hear the mu you hear a mu music and you think that's kind of that's the m that's sort of like the musical version of this. If my character were music, that's the music he or she would be. You know, um, I, I'm. See, I, I I think that it's not. But you're 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 not saying that music or theatre. It's one or the other. It's not one or the other, is it? Is in music. well. You can't have a plan B if you want to succeed in this profession. If you happen to be a great cabinet maker, or a pianist, or a guitarist, and you have another skill. That you could, you could be, you know, when I'm not acting, I'm a gas fitter, or, or, you, you know, I'm a window cleaner, or, a, or whatever, whatever it might be. Um, I don't know whether I'm saying, am I saying the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to want it with your life. It's got to be. A holy thing, like it, it, it's 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 in in, it, in its way, it's um, you, you've you've it, you know your I've. You know, there have been relationships and things that haven't worked. There have been sacrifices, all sorts of things because of this lover, <coughs> wife, mistress, the theatre. I test positive for the theatre disease. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it, and for the certain, and of, there, there are things that one has, has sacrificed. Because I'm fucking selfish. Because I'm a um, quote, uncle, you know, if artist. You, because of this thing, this drive that you have to want to be the best. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? There's nothing. If you're going to do something, do it really well. And you, you know, now, I don't mean that in a. The most gifted people that I have known and worked with, including musicians, actors, you know, the real people at the very top of their game create with humility and they wear their success with grace. They're not horrible, they're not monsters, they're not, you, you know, they have ego. They could be deverish, they could be a little temperamental, they're highly strung. Look at what we do. <laughs> yeah? We're the little nuts. <laughs> but but the the so that doesn't mean 
like a steamroller. I'm going to get to the top no matter what. That, that's not. But you've got to, you've, it's so competitive. You know this. 98% of the profession is out of work at any one given time. It is hugely competitive. So you've got to want it with every fucking molecule. Um, uh, to Let's take some more questions. But, 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 yeah. but that does come There's back to that. thousands of hands. I'm sorry, go on. The thousands of hands. Yeah. You, wait there. You. Yeah. Um, so, the European uh, Theatre Arts course, they've got a show tonight based on the Polish theatre practitioner, Cantor. I just wondered, do you have any European influences in your methodology or on set that, ha that you use to help you get into a role or that you've used throughout your training and throughout your work? Anyone in particular? Well, I, I particularly like European cinema. I mean, I don't, I don't see a great deal of European theatre. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, I've I worked, I worked for a while at Glasgow Citizens Theatre, and under that, under that triumvirate of uh, Giles and Philip and, and, and Robert, it was very, very European based. Let's say, you know, um, uh, I'll take anything. That that's. That's the thing, you know, if, if at the end of the day, you, you're doing Stanislavski, you're doing Stella Adler, Jude Hagen, Lee Strasberg, well, it, 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 oh, it, it doesn't matter. You, you know, if you're going to, if you've got, if you find a way of getting there, I, when I did State of Grace with Sean Penn, he, had, he was in a close-up and he had to emote and someone was burning his leg with a cigarette out of frame. Now, he asked someone to burn his leg so he could get the tears in. It certainly would bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> um, and uh, you could smell the hairs and all of that on his legs burning, you know what I mean? Um, now, I'm not, rec I don't, I'm, not rec <laughs> I'm not recommending that, but uh, whatever gets you through the night, you know what I mean? You know, you'll use, you'll use, uh, that's, ex I mean, that's, that's extreme, but, but you use any, any sort of anything you can, yeah. Thank you. Oh, right. Yes. Hello. Hi, um, so there's a lot of third years in the room at the minute and we're all going through the process of like speaking with agents, meeting with agents, inviting them to shows and all of that jazz. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you had any advice about entering the industry, like getting out the bubble of drama school and when you're first starting out and anything you learned from that? Well, we're talking a while ago. I was at, I, I, I mean, I was here, I started here in 1976. So that is, that's a long time ago, and the industry and, and things have, have changed enormously. Um, are there as many reps around now? Do, is there, is, where, 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 is, where is your work leaving here like, more likely to be? Where do you think? Okay, so, <laughs> so you've auditioned, you've got the part, you, you can call in and go, I'm not coming in anymore, yeah, I'm not coming in today. So, uh, is it, <laughs> I, I, I think I should move on, I can't, I can't top that. I mean, mainly, it's, is it mainly television and now that, 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 
Yeah. But it, it was. But you see, it's a different thing. I can only. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. It, it's hard to advise. You know, give any advice because it was a different. It was a different time. You know, when I left here, there were more rats, and that was a great thing. You went for a six or seventh month season. You did everything from, you, you know, you'll do Tennessee Williams, uh, restoration comedy, and a musical, you know, and Shakespeare. So you'll cover the whole, you'll cover all of that. You could experiment, you could fail, um, and uh, you, you, were, you were relatively safe, you know, you were kind of out, out of town, so you could have a lot more... It, you, you, you had a lot more freedom there, you know. This is the great, the, 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 one, the, the thing about being here is being able to fail and be, uh, make a fool of yourself, you know what I mean? I mean, if you can't, if you can't do it here, um, and, and how many, so uh, um, third year, so the, how, many, how many are you here? There are a lot of... <laughs> Just a few. Just a few. Has it been, has it been a good time here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel ready? Um, yes and no. I think it's like, I think I'll be ready when it ends. But thinking about it, it's kind of scary. But I'm, I'm excited to see what it holds for me. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the early days, I think what I've learned, if, 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 if anything, is it really is about being yourself, isn't it? Just, you know, when, I, I'm nodding my head because I'm thinking of not just be yourself, be your individual self. Yeah, but if you, but that, yeah, I mean, it, 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 but as, but if you're walking in to see an agent, or you're walking in, they want you, don't they? they yeah? You don't, do you, I don't think there's a pressure to give them a, a, a different persona. They want to. They want a... Well, and it's, it's very, very hard to be a mind reader, to know what an agent... You'll all go through the audition process at some point, and you'll never be able to get in the minds of casting directors. No matter how, if you live to be a million years old, you'll never know why someone else got the role, or you'll never know the real reason. It, it could, at some point, even boil down to who fits the costume that exists. you never know the reason. I want to see if we've had our backs to these people yeah, much sorry. of the time. Over in this direction. I didn't see any third year hands over here. So, uh... Cool. Uh, um, I wanted to ask you about uh, your process for working on Leon. Obviously that character is so iconic. And I, you mentioned that you sometimes base your characters on real people. Um, could you just talk me through that process for that particular character? <laughs> Well, it was. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, it is larger than life. You know what I mean? It's. It's. Leon is. It's like a comic book for grown-ups. You, you know, in a way. I mean, it's quite violent. It's quite. Um, people ask me what was in the. The pill. And I always. My response is, it's anything you want it to be. It could be anything that you want it to be. Um, Luke had very fixed ideas um, of, of how he wanted, um, yeah, so he had, yeah, you're working with, you're working on an American character written by a Frenchman, you know, so there's, that's, that's a hurdle that you have to, that you, you know, I, I, not in any disrespectful way, it's just that their ear, you know, the translation, so you're, you're kind of working from a, a, a translation. Um, uh, do, you remember, do you remember Gary Luc Besson's pitch for that role? Very simple. What he, was said, it? he said, uh, there is a man, uh, he go, he shoot. That was about it. <laughs> yeah, something. Yes, and yeah, and not. Um, yeah, and he at the time 
his English was such that he he. Um, I mean, look, here's an, here, here, here's an example. I did, you know, um, uh, Fifth Element. You know, Luke produced Nil by Mouth. I knew the call was coming, you know, and, and I had to go and... I, I said yes to Fifth Element without having read the script because I had to sing for my supper. I, I knew that he was going to call me and ask me to be in his film. And I went, yeah, sure. Because once I got there and saw the rubber and the thing and all of that, I thought, well, um, but uh, so that's a, that that's a case of just of really doing it, do, do, kind of doing it backward. You know what I mean? I mean, I was obligated, and then opened the script and went, oh, okay, um, all right. So you're 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 kind of coming at it from a different. But you had an idea element. about Zorg. No, my idea for Zorg was um, he had um, he was at the time there was this um, well he was on the campaign wasn't American he? American politician. American just, politician yeah. called Ross Perot. And uh, Ross Perot was like he was he was from the south, but he had this you know he used to wear. Uh, have a strange sound, you? <laughs> and then I thought of Bugs Bunny, and I thought, what if you put Ross Perot and Bugs Bunny together? And um, and that's why I came up with Zorka, with the with the, with the teeth. So uh, that was that was for Fifth Element. But it, it um, one thing you know can get one one thing can sort of start sort of. I'm sure you know this. You know you you work on something and then an idea comes to you and it and it's and and you're not and it's not always when you're sitting i don't mean uh, like sitting there you know studying the script you could be at a restaurant or a cinema or a theater or walking up the street or or you know, what i used to do is i used to torture myself which i would be in a play for instance and six months later i'd be walking up the street and go and I, I'd, re I'd rewind things and go, you know, and I'd walk up the street and go, shit, that's how I should have played that line. Um, I do not recommend it. What is done is done, you know. Um, I've become less, uh, have I become less neurotic over the years? Sure. <laughs> I, I think I don't like the word neurotic. I tell you though, uh, I like the word perfectionism because people who are perfectionists are mistaken for being people who like excellence and set a high bar are mistaken for being neurotic. It's different when you're an actor, particularly a movie actor, is you're going to see your face 40 feet high. The rest of us civilians don't often have that happen. The people are going to touch your face and give you clothes and tell you where to sit and where to sit. How about a question from upstairs? Does anyone upstairs have a question? Or should we ignore? Uh, uh, anyone up there? I, I see you, yeah. Go on, you can... Go on. Uh, yeah. That's, go ahead. Use your training? Yes. yes. <laughs> Receive the news. Um, first off, congratulations on your Academy Award. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, during your speech, you said um, it had taken 20 years for you to work with Joe Wright, and I was wondering if there's anybody else that you're still itching to work with. Uh, are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? <laughs> uh, well, there's some people that... Um, well, you, you worked with Francis, for example, at the beginning, and you, you were lucky to have some of these... Oliver, Francis, you think about the big directors and... Yeah, I, I mean, I would like to, I work with Ridley Scott. I'd like to work with Ridley again. I mean, uh, um, you know, it's a, fun, it's a funny one. There are some people that, there, there are people that we've tried to work with who, what, who just, they don't dig me. It's not that they don't dig you. Yeah, but they, they don't, don't like. You know what it is? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. 
you know this because you're a director. A director will get fixated on an actor for a role. So I could say to Gary, oh, let's cast Tom Hanks in that role. Even Gary may say, I love Tom Hanks, but I'm not putting him in that role. It doesn't mean you're rejecting Tom Hanks. It means you don't see that guy in that thing. That's not rejection. Well, but That's there are a few. <laughs> no, Doug, be honest, there are a few that you go, I just don't know what it is. He just, I just can't get you in a room with him. Oh, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to maybe work with... I'd like to work with Ken Loach, but I, 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 I'm, I'm probably too well known now to work. Do, do, do you know what I mean? I don't, he, he tends not to go with people that have... I've got too much baggage now. Uh, never worked with Scorsese. You know, um, but I've had I've had a good run. I've been, you, you know, I've, there I've, I've had a good run. I've, I've worked with some, some some good people. I just worked with Soderbergh. Um, Steven Soderbergh. That, that, that's a whole. That's like going back to school, isn't it? Yeah, and um, he, so and that was uh, uh, and sort of an ambition. You, you know, something. Uh, a bucket list, you know. I thought, I want to, you know, I'd like to work with Soderbergh, and it, and it and it and it and it happened. So it it it, you know, I've probably got a, a few a few more years in me before I I hang up the uh, hang out the gloves, you know. But um, the uh, I think Scorsese, just because when I was here. In my first year, Taxi Driver came out, and I watched it again and again. I even bought the album, you know. When the, the now we're talking with the old with the record player, but I went and bought the album, and I remember that that um, her it was. It, and you notice though that even someone like Martin Scorsese needs to hire Leonardo DiCaprio in his movies to get a movie to get them made. It's, and that's Martin Scorsese. But he can't, you know, a lot of these directors. Um, have, you ever, you, have you ever thought, you've seen a film and you think, why on earth did that person cast them? <laughs> yeah? And really, um, it, it's, it's, you know, Leo has become sort of his muse. Um, but it, it, you know, in a different way than De Niro was, you know, when they used to do those films together. But it's, but it's. Gary, we've got about five more minutes. I want to, I want to go to this but side. I, but I, but, but, there's, oh, now you've touched on, no, but you've yeah, touched yeah. on. <laughs> I have been trying to get a movie made, uh, to which I, which I've written and to direct, um, for seven years, and we just came very. We, we, we have another shot at it, but we just came very close to it. We, we got five and a half million credit from the California. Uh, it's, set in, it's set in the 19th century, 1870. It's in California, um, about an Englishman in California, Edward Mybridge, the photographer. Um, and that is all dependent on who I cast. Not who I'm thinking of who is right for the role, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't made it. Because it's my baby, it's my dream, and I have a vision for it, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I wanna be able to cast the, the actor who I see in the role who is right for the role, rather than casting to get it made. Um, now, I have another job to fall back on. You know, my other, my other job is, you know, acting. <laughs> but if you're a director and you want to... Scorsese's got energy in him and he's, you know, he's, he's an older guy, but, you know, he still wants to work. How is he going to work? How's this man going to make movies? You know, so he has to cast sometimes, I think, not necessarily who is right for the role, 
but who will get the film made. And that is just the, that is, I suppose it's always been like that, but it's kind of a sad, it's a sad, you know, it's a sad reality. And then, and then, and then when you're, when you are, when you, when you have got a star who brings that power and that money and that whole, the whole shazam of it, you know, and he's cast in the right, uh, he's cast in the right role, you know, if you look at uh, something like, you know, the Book of Eli, you know, Denzel, he is a great actor, he is charismatic, he is a star, uh, you know, he brings the whole, he's got the whole package, you know, with someone like that, who, is, who, who then is perfectly cast in a, in a, in a movie like that. Him really, so yeah. Gary, we, I want to just in the next, last five minutes. I want to just go to this division over here. Is this? They've been ignored. They've been looking at my back the whole time. So yes, you go ahead. Yeah, why not? Me or you? Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, throughout the entirety of your career, what is your proudest achievement and what is your biggest regret and why? Well, um, there's a f regrets. I've had a few. <laughs> Such as? Uh, I mean, I've... I, well, there's a few skeletons in the closet. I can't really tell. It, it would be inappropriate of me to, to actually tell you what they are. But there's, a few th there's a few things I walked away from. Um, but you know that actually gave other people careers. You know that started careers for other people. Um, there's a couple of good ones that have got away. Uh, I mean, do I? I uh, yeah, it can needle me once in a while. But but do I? I but regretting and, and over, overthinking it and thinking, oh my God, if only that. Who knows? Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I, many, many, many years ago, I turned down something and it won that actor an Oscar. Would it have, would I, would it have, it doesn't necessarily that I would have won the Oscar, do you know what I mean? If I had played it. So, who's to know how, how the, 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 the journey, what, what's, and, and, and like I say, at the age of, 59, 60 years old, I'm saying, I'd love to work with Soderbergh. And then, uh, you, you know, he calls and says, you know, well, this, you know, it, this Soderbergh wants you for... So it's... Uh, you, 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 can, you can engineer... Um, it, it, yeah, to, to, to a degree, you can shape a, a career. You can engineer it a little. But it's a lot to do with, um, I have been uh, extremely lucky too. I came out of drama school at a certain time, I met that person, it, that person didn't get that role, I got it instead, you know, that led to this, then... Uh, you know, I did a, 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 a director in New York had this crazy idea of casting me in a in a in a state of grace. I did that, you know. I did that, and then went back to the theatre. I mean, I sort of like went and did it, and, kept, and 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 then you know, Oliver Stone saw it and calls me, and it it's all. And there have been times, and there have been lean times. There have there there have been times when. Um, it, it's not all, you know, um, uh, festivals and, uh, you know. But the thing I'm most, uh, the thing I'm most proud of, uh, professionally, yeah. um, I have, um, I think I have a, I do have a soft spot for, for Tinker Taylor. Yeah, I have a soft spot for George, um, who I really missed. And it was enough. an enormous challenge for you. That was a mountain for you to climb. I know our time is about up, but that was an enormous amount. I, I, I'll be really candid with you. Um, 
I, so what, I'm working 30 something, 30 years in, in, in this, having started here. And I got stage fright and real, real. crippling, uh, bone crushing anxiety. Uh, I couldn't eat, I couldn't think straight, uh, I couldn't sleep. When I did sleep, I would wake up and you could literally take the sheets and wring them out. That, that it was this is all approaching George Smiley, approaching this, and the I, day. My hands, and I was shaking, and I would come to him. And I got to the point where I said, I, I, I've got to get on a plane and go home. I've got, I've got, I've got to go. They have to recast this. Well, they can't recast it because they got the money and the thing like you. It's the same thing he always says. It's always that. He goes, they'll sue you, you know. And, and that often works, you know. It's funny how that kind of works. But, but, I, but I did, did, this time I said, I, I, don't, I don't care. Uh, you've got to get me out of this. You've got to get me out of this. So he goes and meets the producer. And the producer says, oh, yeah, it's just a bit of, you know. Bit no, he, of said, he actually says, I said, Tim, Gary's out. We're going home. We're not, he's going to start two days later. We're not doing Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy anymore. Goodbye, we're done. To which he says to me, well, what do you normally do when Gary says this? I lied. I said, he never says this. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first time. It was the first time that this, was, ever, real. this was real. And, and, it, and, it was, and it just happened. And I, and I think what I had done was partly had made this dragon of, of Guinness so big for myself, you know, and I remember before I was an actor, you know, when the series was on, watching him and respecting him, and I mean, he made Smiley, you, you, you know, he was the face of, Sm of George Smiley. And I think that I had turned him into such a boogeyman that uh, I thought, I don't know what I'm doing, there's no there, there, I'm going to stand there, I am, this is the moment when they tap me on the shoulder and say, we've, 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 we've worked out who, you, you're a charlatan, you know, you're, this, this, is, oh, this is the end of it for me. This is real as real can be. And I, and I, um, so it, I was in a really, I was in a really bad way, and that's by way of saying, you know, when you said, "What's what are you most proud of?" The, the, one of the things I'm, I'm most proud of is the thing that I, I wanted to run from. Um, anyway, it um, uh, a doctor gave me a little anxiety pill. And just to just to lower the ceiling of this thing, or raise the ceiling of it, so I wasn't, you know, um, like basically a beta blocker. I mean, basically, you know, bring my heart rate down, take away some of the anxiety. And um, um, I knew the role. I'd done the work. I knew the role, but uh, this thing hit me like a truck. The first shot of the movie. You asked me not to go on the set to watch. He did not want me to come on the set. He said, stay away. He came back to the trailer 15 minutes later, and he was happy as a bee. He had gotten back, he had gotten back on the bicycle and well, realized th that it was... Well, I think I just had this demon, that, that I, this dragon I needed to slay. And the funny thing is, and I walked on the set, and there's, you know, Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, in my face, <laughs> and uh, you know, and I thought, I, you know, and well, the thing is, you walk on the set and you have to climb over the, all the all the cables. So I'm climbing over the cables. I'm walking on the set. I look around. And I go, there's a camera. You know, and I think, God, I know where I am. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I thought, I'm okay, what's all this, why were you, what's all this fretting? And, um, and I did the first take and, I, it, and it never, thank, touch, 
would. It's never it come back, but it, it was. But that's the, that, isn't that just the irony, isn't it? The thing that you most are really uh, um, scared of. So I get still insecure. I is yeah. Um, I often. What was it? It was first of all. What is it? Turn it down. What is it? Rejection, denial, procrastination, and I will get in 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 those four things. There will be days when um, I'll turn to Giselle. We were working on Churchill, and I said, "I am. I'm. I'm. Um, uh, I, I, I am insane." to have even taken the song. I don't know what I'm doing, this, this iconic character, I can't get this right, I can't get that right. But all, but all the time, I, I worked out the range in his voice. I went to a piano te a singing teacher, and we learned, we worked out the range on the piano. And then I worked and did exercises and worked with this guy to get the sound and to lower my voice, to get that, <clears throat> you know, yeah, that sort of Churchill sound. And that's the other thing, you know, I was told when I left here, you know, well, darling, really, you'll only play Puck. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, it, but it, it, you take that with you, you go, you know, well, you're really a tenor voice. Okay, I worked with, you know, in the 80s, uh, the sits, I worked with, you know, Mark Rylance. That's a tenor voice. Uh, Anthony Scher. So, you know, if it wasn't <clears throat> Richard Burton and all of that, you know, you didn't sound like that, then, you know, uh, you know little, little old Gary from New Cross was only ever going to play Puck. <laughs> you know, and that's the... That's the thing. It's, a, it's an organ. It's a, it's a, you can make it do, you can make it do things, you know, so you can work and, and, and lower it, higher it. You, you know, it just needs that. It's, it's a, it's, but it's an attitude. That's, that's, you know, I get up and think, that's it. Get, call that guy, work on this, work on that. And of course, and in between that, one is insecure, going, will I ever get there? Will I ever get there? And then the more you work on it, and then one day you start to find it, and you go, oh, here I am. Ah, I can now, I'm feeling it now. Now, now the work is, that, all that hard work is starting to now uh, bubble around and, 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 and live. I'm probably telling you what you, all, yeah. what, what, what you already know, but, it's, it's, um, but there's no substitute for it. So Gary Oldman has won three BAFTAs. One is a screenwriter, one is a producer, one is an actor. He's been nominated for others. He's won every other prize you can win, the Golden Globe, the SAG Award, uh, the magical power gold statue known as the Oscar. And um, it all started right here in Sidcup, in Rose Bruford at Sidcup. So thank and you. And if Gary. I can do it, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs>